everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Today's story is about the healing power of the silvery green color of a sage plant. Also, I'm painting an antique. <laughs> nearly an antique. Possibly an antique. She's an older lady. It's true that folks have differing opinions about painted furniture, especially when it comes to antique and older pieces, but it helps to remember that painted furniture is not a new trend. It has been around for hundreds of years, and there are many, many broke down, busted, not all that valuable antique pieces for which a painted treatment would be a great option to help them get back in the game. And we are about to meet one such subject who had such a significant injury, her owner could not even find a place that would accept her as a donation. I found this beautiful dresser listed for free on Facebook Marketplace, but it's not terribly surprising to see why it had a very significant chunk of veneer and trim missing on that one drawer, as well as the very common condition known as scratched over body. <laughs> After trying to donate it, its owner was happy to have a friendly neighborhood flipper come and pick her up. I fell in love with these beautiful lines and the floret details, which made me immediately think of Sacred Sage by Fusion Mineral Paint. And that amazing curved base and the solid wood feet inspired me to do something a little different. I think I'm going to be making a custom color paint wash for that. Okay, I began by taking out all the drawers and removing the hardware. With an older piece especially, it's great if you can label the hardware as you remove it so it can go back where it was. It's been sitting there a long time and it likes its spot. Then I made a big bucket of warm soapy water with Dawn dishwashing soap and gave the dresser a thorough cleaning inside and out, rinsed it completely, and then left it out in the sun to dry. There's nothing like a sun bath to kick out any old smells. Next, I gave it a good scuff sanding with a 220 grit sandpaper. I saw immediately how easily that old finish was coming off and I knew I would need to prime this piece well. Here comes the blower and there goes the dust. Quick tip, always wear a dust mask when you are sanding and leave it on while you're cleaning up the dust. Okay, here you can see that veneer injury up close. I am going to be using a product called Bondo. This is a super strong wood filler that is ideal for repairing furniture. It is paintable, stainable, water resistant, it's definitely one of a furniture flipper's go-to products. Bondo is super stinky, so working outside is best and wearing a mask as well is also good. It comes with a tube of this red hardener that you apply a line of into the more yellowy filler and then you stir and blend them together for a couple of minutes until it kind of looks like silly putty. The only thing about Bondo is that it dries really quickly, so don't stir it up until you are ready to go. <laughs> but the great news is that messy and a lot is just fine with Bondo. You, you just kind of want to trowel it on. I mean, look, I'm using a paint stirrer because that is what I had on hand. Um, making sure that there's enough so that you can cover the edges of what you're connecting to and you can sand it down once it dries. So I applied it all over that large drawer wound and then hit those chips down on the base of the dresser as well. Like I said, Bondo dries quick, so this was ready to sand in 15 minutes. And so I came back in with my orbital sander and a 220 grit disc and just using the shape of the original drawer started shaping that new side and corner. Thank you. 
Once I had the general shape, I used that same grit disc over a sanding sponge and finished shaping the corner by hand. Okay, she's looking a bit better. Sometimes when you make a repair this big, there are little tiny imperfections. So I came back in and filled those tiny little holes with some more just basic wood filler. So now I needed to address that delicate trim piece that's missing. I am using Amazing Mold Putty by Aluminolite. The link is below. Friends, I've used other molds in the past, but when I first saw this over on Christina Muscari's channel called Pretty Distressed, by the way, she is absolutely amazing. You should definitely be subscribed to her if you're not already. I was so excited to try it because this is food grade. You just mix equal parts of it together until the color is uniform, no gloves needed. I could do this inside with my helper cats helping. No curious kitties were harmed in the creation of this mold. It is a little sweet. Yum. So I just pressed and formed my putty around the matching trim piece on the twin drawer and then let it cure for about 20 minutes, then carefully pried it up and it worked. I had a flexible rubbery mold with the exact trim detail I needed. So the next step was to mix up a little more Bondo and using a tongue depressor, I filled in that mold. I gave that a good hour to set up and then carefully popped it out of that mold. It looks kind of like peanut butter on banana. You can see there was a bit of excess that I just kind of trimmed and peeled off. And then using a pair of scissors, I just snipped that little extra piece of corner that I didn't need. There was a spot on one end that was a little high, so I just used my sandpaper to file that down. Okay, so I lined up my new trim piece and took a look. It was looking good except for being a little short, but I knew I could build that up later. I wiped my drawer down to remove any dust and then used a small paintbrush to apply some wood glue. I glued the new trim into place wiping up any excess glue and then used painter's tape to help hold it in place as it dried. Henna helped to keep the drawer from flying up into the atmosphere. Thank you, Henna. Once that had dried, I came back with the wood filler and filled that little crack where the new trim piece met the old, as well as built up that end where it had been a tad short. Let's go back to the top of the dresser. Seeing just how scratched up it was, I knew the best thing to do would be to give the top a good sanding. Otherwise, we would be able to see the scratches through the paint. So back came my orbital sander again with a 220 grit disc. And together we got all those scratches off. Okay, now it was time to prep the base. Because I was going to try a paint wash on the legs and apron, I sanded off all that old finish and dark stain. It was finally time to prime the piece. After I removed the excess dust with a large paintbrush, I used Dixie Belle's primer in white. This is such a great primer when working with furniture. It blocks bleed through from tannins as well as any smells or stains. 
it's really ideal for older pieces. Here's our drawer patient, and here's where we can start to really see the fruits of all that Bondo repair labor. Look how our primer starts to show off the drawer's new silhouette. After I primed all the drawers, I taped off the legs and the apron of the dresser to protect it from any primer drips. I also taped off the inside of the piece. It's important to bring whatever finish is on the outside of the dresser body into the inside of the piece so that with any drawer movement or from any angle, you don't see something different peeking through. You can definitely freehand this, but it's kind of nice to tape it off. It gives you a cleaner, more professional look. Then I continued priming the rest of the dresser being careful to really get into all of the little nooks and crannies of all the different trim details. After letting the primer dry overnight, I used a sanding disc over a cloth and just gently sanded over all the primer to kick off any rough spots so we'll have a nice smooth surface for painting. I am ready for some sacred sage. I wiped down the drawers with a tack cloth and then used my zebra chisel brush to paint the drawers. This brush is so great for managing both the trim detail as well as the long smooth fronts of drawers. Zebra makes all kinds of fantastic yet affordable brushes and is a huge supporter of the furniture painting community. They even have a podcast. It's a super cool company. If you'd like to check them out, there's a link below. When I put on the first coat of paint, I really try to make sure that I'm covering everything, getting around and in all of the details and then I do long, unbroken strokes to give it as smooth and brush-free finish as possible. So a little bit about Fusion Mineral Paint. It is one of my favorites to use when painting furniture. It has little to no odor, no VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Its acrylic resin acts as a built-in top coat, so yes, that's right, you don't have to do a separate top coat. Many furniture painters will still do that because furniture, of course, tends to take a beating, but after 30 days, this paint cures down very hard. I have pieces in my own home that I haven't added any sort of sealer to, and they are still looking perfect, no chips or scratches. But I think one of my favorite things about Fusion is their colors. Their colors are deep, complex, and so on point with current color trends. This color, Sacred Sage, could be a contender for a viral color war. Is it green? Is it blue? Is it gray? <laughs> to me, it reads as the most beautiful soft herbal green. But that's what I love about Fusion's colors. Their depth and complexity remind us of colors that occur in nature. Fusion has really excellent coverage as well, so all I needed was two full coats. And then while that second coat was still wet, I removed all of the painter's tape. Okay, so next it was time to make my custom color wash blend. I used raw silk from Fusion as the base and then just added a little splash of the color Bedford for some extra warmth. 
And then using the measurements on the painter's cup, I added the same amount of water so that we would have a 50-50 blend or wash and mixed those together. I gave my base a little water mist and then just started brushing it on. It's going to be really, really drippy, so just make sure you have a drop cloth. I worked in small sections, painting it on and then wiping it back with a rag. And really, as you go, you can adjust how much you apply depending on how the wood is responding and how you are liking the look. herb garden theme. This is a beautiful stencil by Donna Downey Stencils. The link is below if you'd like to check it out. Divine Lavender and some more Sacred Sage by Fusion are going to bring this stencil to life. Using painter's tape, I placed the stencil along the side of the drawers and then just started stippling the paint in. With stenciling, less paint is more, so I'm using that paper plate to blot my brush. Stenciling is so much fun. After all the prep work a piece like this takes, this is really a joy and gives a bit of immediate gratification. And here is a beautiful, subtle hint of a lavender garden. One finishing step I really love to do is to give my piece what's called a wet sand. This is not necessary, but this sanding technique of gently sanding over a wet surface with a fine grit paper carefully kicks off any little rough spots and it just leaves your piece with a silky smooth finish. You just wipe up with a lint-free cloth as you go and you can really feel the difference. Even though Fusion doesn't need a separate top coat, I decided to add a layer of wax. Dressers get a lot of hands-on treatment, so I knew the wax would be a good insurance policy. And I also just love how it deepens the color and adds a rich sheen. This is Jolie Wax in Clear. Using my big wax brush, I worked in the wax and then wiped back any excess. Okay, time to clean the hardware. To get off the many, many years of tarnish, I used my Brasso and a lint-free rag and some elbow grease. <laughs> really important to wear gloves and work outside. And now time to bring that lovely old hardware back home. So after standing back and looking at the dresser, I decided I wanted to add a little white wax. I'm using, again, Jolie's white wax, and I'm even applying it to the brass hardware. This is going to help mellow out that sheen and shine of that bright brass, and the subtle kind of soft white wax will settle into the corners and trim details of the dresser giving us an almost filtered, dreamy effect on the painted body, which will help it to tie into the whitewashed base. Whenever I do different finishes on the base and the body of a piece, I really like for there to be some kind of linking element, and this white wax is going to give us just that. You may have noticed that some of our ancient brass hardware has some stubborn discoloration. So I grabbed my gold wax and using a small paintbrush just added little touches here and there.
to seal up our whitewashed base, I used some more of the Jolie wax in white. I loved how this married the whitewash wood and the paint together. It was so, so subtle, but made an enormous difference in the overall balance of the piece. Final step, a little Big Mama's Butter by Dixie Belle to refresh these gorgeous solid wood drawers. Can I just take a second and furniture nerd out here <laughs> and say how much I adore these solid wood drawer dividers? To quote Patrick Dempsey in Can't Buy Me Love, our grandparents sure knew how to make things that last. Do you recall our old friend from before? And here she is now. Fresh, light, dreamy, soothing. These are the words that come to mind seeing this beautiful piece in its new sage green. The lavender garden blossoms forward as the drawers are opened. The beautiful, softly curved base gets to show off its natural solid wood with that subtle paint wash. The original brass has been uncovered but tempered and mellowed by that white wax. And now we can really see all of that delicate trim detail in its new sage color. With her beautifully healed drawer, I'm fairly certain our old friend won't have any trouble finding a new home now. Right. If you're ready for the chapter on numbers, here we go. My costs were right at about $55 and I listed and sold the dresser for $485, giving me a profit of $430. Fiscally, this dresser was definitely worth it, even with those extra repairs. But I have to say it was just a joy to work with. I mean, with bones like this, how can you go wrong? If you liked today's video, please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. It's a huge support for new YouTubers such as myself, and I hope you feel encouraged to write a new chapter for your older pieces. Remember, we look at our furniture every single day and it impacts how we feel in our home. A wonderful way to honor these older pieces is to refresh them through a modern lens, giving them a chance to be newly cherished in the ongoing story of your family. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables.